Praise God that uh, we can uh, do this uh, worship in both uh, language. We had just finished the uh, Mandarin recording. Now God gives me uh, grace and energy to continue to do the uh, English. Uh, so let's pray. Father, we thank you. We can worship you. We thank you for the Apostle Paul. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he wrote down his Romans to explain clearly what is the good news of Jesus Christ. Help us to open our hearts to receive the good words that is going to give us a, a, a life that's full of God's goodness. And in sharing this good, good news, that more people will get to know Christ. So bless our time together in your words. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we continue the Romans uh, 7, 4 to 6. Bear fruit to serve. Now let's review. Uh, in chapter 7, verse 4, it says, uh, Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. When the Apostle Paul says that you have died to the law, through the, uh, you, have, you were made dead to the law. This is through the body of Christ. So in the last few months, we've been comparing the uh, Romans 6 and Romans 7. In Romans 6, Apostle Paul teaches to understand in Christ, we died to sin, verse 2. And we are free from sin, verse 18. And we are justified from sin, verse 7. And we have a newness of life in verse 4. And we can trace this death and the freedom and justification and newness of life also in Romans 7. See, in Romans 7, uh, Apostle Paul further explained that we not only died to sin, we also died to the law. So verse 4, died to law. Verse 3, free from law. Verse 6, released from law. So the law is, uh, has become ineffective on our uh, sanctification. Verse 6 also talks about the newness, but this time it's in spirit. So last week, we have asked this sixth question about our relationship to the law. So what is mankind's relationship to the law? And we says the mankind is always under the law. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Secondly, what does it mean to die to the law? It means that the law is not a means of salvation. Believers cannot earn salvation through good works. Number three, why must sinners die to the law? In order to be saved, Sinners have to be freed from the judgment of the law. Number four, how can sinners be freed from the judgment of the law? Someone has to remove the judgment for them. In this case, it's Christ. How did God help sinners to be freed from the judgment of the law? God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to be judged in His body for our sins. Number six, what's mankind's relationship to the law after the death of Christ? The mankind is made dead to the law because Christ died to the law. So in a nutshell, we use this six question and answers to explain that in Christ, through his body, we were all made dead.
to the law. It means a secretion, the motivation and the energy of our life is not from the law, but from grace and from spirit. So, uh, in last week's study, I uh, come across this uh, a reading about a light foot. He's a, a biblical uh, a research researcher. He 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 explained the law has three stages. Uh, before we know uh, the uh, the scripture, and after we know the scripture, and after we are saved, the first one is. Uh, Prior to the law, that's when we don't know anything about Bible, and we are sinful, and also we don't know how sinful we are. So that's a very pitiful uh, situation. Next is under the law. When we are exposed to Scripture, and when we are exposed to the Gospel, we know that we are sinful, and we also uh, uh, conscious of sins, but we yearning after a better things. We don't want to remain in this sinful situation. And when the grace, the grace of the law came, we become dead to the law. And so we are free from the law and we are justified uh, uh, in Christ Jesus. So these are the three stages of uh, uh, law. So in Christ, what is my identity? Now, we, the last few months, we've been uh, learning about what's our identity uh, in uh, chapter uh, 6. So in chapter 6, uh, our identity is we are united with Christ. In verse 3 to 5, Apostle Paul used the analogy of baptism and the burial and the resurrection. So in verse 5, he said, we are united in the likeness of Christ's death and Christ's resurrection. And verse 8 also says that we die with Christ and we also live with Him. And verse 8 and verse 5 are pretty much parallel. And 11 is the first command in the book of Romans. Apostle Paul asks us to look at ourselves through Christ that we died to sin and alive to God. Verse 14, what's our situation? The sin cannot be our master. We are no longer under law, but we are under grace. And that's our position. In, uh, in the last half of the uh, chapter 6, he used the analogy of slavery. So what's our position in our ident identity now? In verse 8, that we are slave of righteousness. And the climax of this uh, union is that we are slave of God. And that's what, who we are. The problem with human beings is that they do not know who they are. Most of people have no adequate assessment of who they are. All of us do not have clear understanding to whom we belong to. Most of us are insecure. Sociologists, Anthropologist, psychiatrist, psychologist, philosopher, even theologian, they are all attempted to help us to define who we are. The question of who am I is too abstract for most of the people. It is not urgently pressing to daily life. Consequently, most of us just live through the mechanics of life without a clear purpose to know who we are and what we should do in day-to-day -day life. Now, as a Christian, God gave us a new identity in Christ. Something has happened to us. We have a new nature, new appetite, a new taste, a new preference to live for someone other than ourselves. How did this happen? Paul said, you also were made dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you might become to another. This also means that something that happened to Christ has also happened to us. The death of Christ is through His own body. Christ literally died in His body for our sins. He condemned sins in His own body. 
The law curses and condemns sin in sinners. Christ has removed curses and condemnation of the law on the cross for sinners. Nothing wrong with the law. The law is holy, just, and righteous. It is the intent of God's good will. The law is good. In Leviticus uh, chapter 18, 1 to 4, Yahweh revealed to Moses to tell Israel, now when you are in a new land, you don't practice the thing you learn from Egypt. Now you also don't practice the way of Canaanites. Instead, you should follow my statutes, do my commandments. In verse 4, uh, Moses says, if you do this, then you shall live. And this is the law. If you can do the whole law, then you have righteousness from God. The problem is, no one can fulfill the, the entire law. And the law is a picture of a covenant, a relationship. The old covenant, God revealed us through the law. And the new covenant, God revealed us through the law of Christ which is the law of love. So this is the identity, our position in Christ. Now, let's read the uh, scripture together from uh, Romans 7, 4 to 6. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions, aroused by the law, were at work in our members to bear fruit for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive, so that we were served in the new way of the Spirit, and not in the old ways of the written code. Now let me introduce you this uh, three verses in the background. In verse 4, we can see the justification and sanctification are different subject, but they are inseparable. Calvin taught this. Curse is the one who separate justification and sanctification. Christ justifies sinners by his atonement. Once sinners are made dead to the law, they're united with the reason Christ. And this is the unions. Uh, the union propels sinners to produce observable good works for God. So if you are a Christian, you must have good works. If you do not have good works after you become a Christian, then you have to question yourself what kind of Christian you are. People can see their good behaviors and they give glory to their Father in heaven. Now the contrast about bearing good fruit is a, a sanctified life. is a the dead life that's still under the power of sin, death, and the law. The measure of a life is controlled by the passion of sin in the shadow of the law to produce many dead works that will not last. That is, that is in the background of verse 5. Now in verse 6, this is where the believers now, their identity, their status, their position, their place in Christ. Now those who are delivered from the law will serve others in the power of the Holy Spirit. The old and the cold written law cannot appear to them anymore. So, in verse 4, we found this principle. Believers are dead to the law, so that they are united with Christ to bear fruit in good works for God. Here we see justification on the first part of the verse. You also have died to the law through the body of Christ. 
Last week we have understood that you have died is really a passive tense. That we were made dead because the death of Christ on the cross, he condemns sin in his own body. Through his work, we also die to the power of sin, which is the law. And we die to the law. And that's the justification. And we said justification and uh, sanctification are inseparable. So that you may belong to another. See here, part of all, he said, belong to Christ. He didn't just jump right into Christ. He passed. And he said, you belong to another. And who is this another? And he bring the focus to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. See, Christian is not only remain in death to the law. He's alive and well by the power of resurrection. And so he's, Apostle Paul said that you belong to another, that you belong to the one who has been raised from the dead. And this is the union with Christ. And it's also the base of our sanctification. It's Christ in us and we are in Him. That's in uh, uh, John 14 verse 20. Jesus foretold that the union with Christ that when He was in the upper room with, with His disciples. We are united with Christ in His death in his burial, in his resurrection. Today we are even seated together with Christ in the heavenly realm. That's Ephesians 2. We are totally united with him. And the purpose is what? Is to produce good works for God. Produce good works for God. So together, justification and sanctification will bring the measurable, observable, good works for God. So if you would turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2, the area we are all very familiar with about the grace and the faith and the works. The precious Word of God, the most clear salvation by grace through faith, will produce work. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the work of God. The man is not justified by the works of the law but by faith in Jesus Christ. Verse 9, Not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Verse 10, For we are his workmanship. The original Greek word is, we are a, a poem. And that God composed this poem in Christ Jesus for us to do good works, which God prepared beforehand, that we should walk in them. See, this good work, this fruit, is the will of God. He prepared for us, for all Christians, after the justified and sanctified, and we should bear good fruit. And the contrast, without sanctification, without justification, the law remains worse in sinful men. By their sinful passion in sinners to produce fruit of death. Verse 6 said, But now we are released from the law. Sorry. For verse 5, for while we were living in the flesh. See, this flesh has uh, uh, the Bible scholars has uh, counted about 90 to 100 times in the New Testament. 
and sometimes on the context they, they mean different things. Okay. But here it has a picture of our deadness in our trespass and sin in the flesh as a negative tone. In the NIV, it, uh, a lot of times it translates to our sinful nature. And Apostle Paul goes on to say, our sinful passion. The original uh, Greek word is the, the passion, the desire of sin. As sinners, we have that in us. We inherited that from Adam, that we have that desire for sinning. Aroused by the law, stirred up, inflamed, stimulated by the law. The law is a double-edged sword. On one hand, it prohibits us to do something. On the other hand, it encourages us to do something on, on the contrary. For example, do not covet. That's the last commandment in the Ten Commandment. Apostle Paul said, Without law, I do not know what is covet. But when the law came, it stimulates, it produces all kinds of covetousness in me. So you see, the law is double edged show. On the one hand, it prohibits. It prevents us to do something, but on the other hand, it encourages, it stimulates us, it pushes, it arouses to apply that passions of sin and work in our body to bear fruit for death. See on verse 4. That after we are justified and sanctified in union with Christ, with that new life, new identity, new nature, new temperament, new taste, new preference, new value, new purpose, then we bear fruit for God. The, the fruit will last. Like in John uh, 15, to bear fruit, more fruit, much fruit. In the Sermon on the Mountain, Christ said, you should present your good works before men that they may give praise to your Father in heaven. It's not a showing off. It's a throwing out the, 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 the goodness from the good news, the fruit that can glorify God. Build a people. But without grace, without the atonement of Christ, this is what we are. We live in the flesh, and our passion of sin, stimulated, promoted by the, by the law, by the holy law, and working us to bear fruit, fruit. That will not last. See, we have to be careful. When we are sharing gospel with others, when we are sharing good news with unbelievers, we do not give them a false impression that we take them out for a dinner, that we serve them, that we give them good gifts. We help them in their life problem. We do a lot of service to them. And they like us, but they have no idea about what good news is. Then we use the words of the law to bring people to God, which is a false gospel. So God help us that we do not use law as a means of salvation to bring people to God, especially for many, many believers, for Christian, that we have to be aware of this, that the only good news is the Holy Christ died for the sinners on the cross, bear their 
uh, sin, receive the judgment, and to bring us to God. That's the real good news. Now, Apostle Paul, after the contrast, he moved on, what are we now? Those who are dead to the law now serve others in new spirit. So with this uh, a bear good fruit has action. The action is serving other people in a new spirit, not by reaching the law. Apostles said, now we are released from the law. The original word that released is to make it ineffective. The law has no longer the power over us. The law cannot condemn us. The law cannot curse us. The law cannot imprison us. We are free from the law. Law has become ineffective in us. As a Christian, our power of serving is not from law. On the next few weeks, we continue to learn and to unpack this, this concept. Law is not the predominant force in our life. The predominant force in our lives is the blood of Christ, the, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. And Apostle Paul paraphrased it. Having died to that which held us captive, the original Greek words, the law, hold us down, press, press us down, that we do not have freedom. But now we have died to the law. The law is no longer effective. In order that we serve in the new way of the Spirit, with our new freedom, our new identity, our new position, our new status, died to sin, died to death, died to the law, then we can serve by the power of the Holy Spirit, by the power of the resurrection, and not in the old way of the written code. The old way of the written code in the original Greek is a graphe. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a a written code, it's a rigid uh, letter. It would not give you life. The law cannot give you life. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, Apostle Paul used the same wording that the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. We are not following a rigid commandment. We are following a living and risen Christ. He fulfilled the law and gave us the spirit and give us the resurrected power so we can serve God and people. In conclusion, believers are dead to the law, so they are united with Christ to bear fruit in good works for God. Again, dead to the law, that's our justification. United with God, that's our, our sanctification. And the purpose is what? We have real fruit in life. We share gospel with people, we serve people, we love people, we pray for people. In the past, when we don't know God, the law works on the sinful passion in sinners, to, build, to produce fatal fruit of death. Without Christ, all the works are filthy. All the good works cannot last, has no eternal value. But now those who are dead to the law serve others in the new spirit, but not by reach the command. Are you in Christ or are you without Christ? Do you still fear the law or are you free from law? It does not mean that you have no regard for the law and live a careless lifestyle. Instead, you have the fruit of spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, self-control. Apostle Paul said what? Against such thing, there's no law. So instead, you live beyond 
what the law required for those who have the Holy Spirit. We thank God that He has empowered us, the power of resurrection. We love to do many good works that God prepared for us to do. For His pleasure, for His name's sake, and for His glory, we serve others not only because we have to, but because we want to. It gives us a pleasure, a godly pleasure, not to please ourselves, but to serve God and to serve other people. That pleasure stems from the joy of the Lord. It is from love and not from law. We thank God that we were made dead to the law. And we belong to another. And this another is the resurrected law. The purpose is that we can produce good fruit. We no longer produce dead fruit because we die to sin, we die to the law. And finally, the law is no longer effective. The law cannot control us. The law cannot uh, compel us and imprison us. Instead, with the power of the Holy Spirit and the power of the resurrection to love God and love people. May God bless this church. May God bless all each family that we will produce more fruit, much fruit to glorify our Father in heaven and for the benefit of people around us. Let's pray. Father, we love you because you have loved us. We are born from above. Those who are born from above must love God and love people. Lord, we thank you. We are new in Christ. And we, are, we have the, the power of resurrection available to us. And we have the power of the Holy Spirit to love. Thank you for Christ. Thank you for your powerful word that we can continue to grow and to be sanctified and to bear more fruits. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.